Now watch. Oh, can't really tell. Once I have a close-up, <clears throat> Mr. DeMille, <laughs> ready for my close-up. Um, all right, uh, I'll call the North St. Paul Arts and Culture Commission to order. It's at 6.30 p.m. It is June 7th, 2023. Uh, we will go to the call to order and uh, roll call. So, uh, Sarah, if you could please take the roll for us. Sure. Tom Sonic. Here. Carrie Netto. Here. Amanda Black. Here. Stacy Maher. Here. Emily Haig Nguyen. Here. Lisa Ritchie is excused. C. Yang. Here. And Cecilia Garaki and Lisa Wong are both excused. And staff, Sarah Lang, are you here? Sure am. All right. Okay, so uh, item three is to adopt the agenda. Is anything anybody see here that you would like to change or any additions to what you see? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adopt the agenda as is. So moved. Moved by Carrie. Second. Second by C. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the agenda is adopted. So the approval of minutes, if you all had a chance to read through the minutes, um, if there's any discussion, any uh, edits required, please let me know. If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes as, uh, as stated. So moved. Moved to Seconded. approve by Stacy. second by Amanda. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Minutes are approved. Meeting open to the public. There's nobody here. Public hearings, we have none. So commission business and action items, so we'll get right into it. So project updates. Um, so we'll start at the top again with Project Snowy. Do we have any updates on this project, Stacy, C, or Amanda? Sure do. Oh, fantastic. What do you got? All right. Well, I mean, just to keep everybody up to date, right? So mm -hmm. I will start and then I'll hand it off to Amanda to share the rest of the updates. But uh, so from our last meeting, um, we, we, we've um, done a lot of more finalizing of our programming details. Okay. And so those have gone to Brandy and Sarah to do a uh, review. I know that they've made some um, suggestions. And so we just need to go through and um, kind of like finalize and look at them. And I think there were some things that the subcommittee just needs to talk about. But once that gets finished, then we can start doing some like, <laughs> outreach with the information. And we can share it around as well so that everybody knows what's going on. But I think uh, some of the things that we still need to look into is like, is the space at Public Works where the snowies will sit, is that a covered space? Yes. If they're going to be inside the building. I clarified that. They will be inside. Okay. Great. Excellent. Raise the roof. Literally. <laughs> we were like, do we have to, you know, rent tents or something? Yeah. Which, okay, that's perfect. And then, um, and then as far as like the clear coat, um, co like, Cost. I know we've we've kind of gone back and forth about it, um, but you know, like one of the thing. Um, but I'm still pretty sure we still want to have that come out of our budget, and I'm thinking perhaps out of budget this year, since I think you know any potential transportation fees will come out of next year's budget. So potentially we could buy the clear coat from our thousand dollar. I see. I see. And just budget. store it. Until yes. It's needed. Okay. Yes, if possible. So, uh, still something that we can look into. And um, so, one of the things that we brought up last time was that potentially, did we want to, pre did, did we, w should we, or present at uh, city council? And, um, <clears throat> and that was also because we were thinking a lot about the transportation costs. But since then, we have had more options open to us. And one of that is just that basically, I think the transportation cost itself might be lower than what we had um, initially thought. So not the 5,000, maybe more like five, 600, yeah. you know, potentially. But then also we have another potential uh, in-kind donation from Cornerstone Concrete, ah. who might be willing to do some um, assistance with like transportation as well. So. So that's exciting, and we're hoping to kind of keep them in the loop so that they remember when it 
when it comes time next year. So um, timeline. Is, is Cornerstone Concrete, is that a North St. Paul business? It is. Well, it, it has a branch. It's based out of, I think, Stillwater, really. Stillwater. Okay. But um, they, they have one. It's on the corner of, like, right by Oakdale oh, nice. on 7th and, oh, yeah. Perfect. Right. Yeah. And Century. That's the other street, yes. And so um, the other, so not presenting to the city council, but we were looking to present to the business association. However, we have not heard back from them. So uh, I don't know if we will be getting on to their June meeting. And if not on their June meeting, I believe our subcommittee looked it up and it doesn't look like there's another summer meeting scheduled for them. So potentially we might not be presenting to them, but we're happy to send more info via email or um, yeah, share in other methods so that they are kept abreast of what's happening. Um, the, <coughs> I'm sorry, the, who's not meeting in the summer? Business Association? Oh, the business association. Yep. Because okay. there was a, um, the talk of like kind of keeping them in the loop. Yeah. Okay. So uh, more more stuff, which I'm going to hand over to Amanda to talk about since um, she's she's done a lot of work in the business research part. So. so the next step for us is going to be reaching out to businesses and organizations about purchases. We are mere weeks away from doing that. What we wanted to do first before we get to that point is we'll have our full programming established, our agreements for the businesses and the artists finalized a website set up for information, and then if we were going to do that business association meeting. Once those things are complete, we can start our outreach. And this is really the part where our subcommittee would like to ask for the help of the full commission. Mm -hmm. And what uh, Sarah and I have put together a large list of businesses and organizations in the area. It's about 130 right now. Um, we've divided that list into three sections. So those businesses that are on 7th Avenue, um, the businesses and organizations that would be east of Margaret or west of Margaret. So those three areas. Um, my proposal is that we split up into groups of two or three to tackle each section. And I'm going to pass out now. This was not included in your packet since I just finished it today. Um, I'm working on a brochure. That, so nobody's seen this, not even say C or C. This is fantastic. A brochure that we can hand out um, to these groups. And then kind of an outreach plan here. So when we do split up into our little sections, this is how I kind of see it going. So that one page snowy outreach plan. My idea is that we each group would then visit their businesses and organizations they would leave this brochure either ideally with a manager or owner. If not, they can leave it with an employee to then pass on to the manager. Two weeks later, follow up with a phone call to see if there are any questions and make sure that those managers who didn't receive the information did receive it. If they are not interested, we're taking them off the list. We will not keep contacting them. If they're interested, we send them along to Sarah to get the purchase agreement signed and continue forward there. <coughs> If it's a maybe, see if they have any questions. Three weeks later, we can mail the brochure again just to keep them reminded of the project. And then one week later, a follow-up phone call. This is all just to ensure that we touch base with them several times, but we do not overstep our bounds with reaching out to them too much. And the brochure, I really took the verbiage from the flyer that C had put together previously. Um, the, there's one thing, so there's a website listed yeah. that is just what I threw in for now. We do not have a current website. I was going to ask, because we were going to put a website up. Is there a way, because I know the city's websites are like really long. We can do like a, do a hyperlink, URL. like a, like a, yeah, a tiny URL, something that's easier yeah, to access. She can also rename them to, to be like northstpaul.org slash snowy. Um. So we can do that as well. Okay. Is that a, could you uh, do that and just email our subcommittee yes. when it's done? Well, I was going to talk to oh, okay. Sarah and Carrie about website other things as well. Yeah. Yes. So. 
That's I'll, awesome. I'll touch base with it. Perfect. Thoughts? This is amazing. I think it's Holy. fantastic. Holy shit. Yeah, this is great. <laughs> yeah, so the ask is that the full commission yeah. help out with this outreach. Just because, you know, there's 130 plus businesses. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do we want to make, if <clears throat> I, I don't know how you want to do that, but if you were to send me a list of businesses and brochures and say, go to these ones, I would do, I would do that. So the proposal was to have three groups of commission members together, and then mm. the groups can organize how they want to do, do their assigned. What? You can do all of mine, too. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, I think that's what the ask is, right? Yeah, so my thought was two maybe people go out together and then visit all these places. Whether you, it, It's up to you. So say Stacy and Tom are together. You two discuss whether you want to split that list or if you want to go out together to all these places. Um, yeah. We'll just try to make sure it all happens around the same timeline once we have everything in place. Yeah, fantastic. And you, the expectation of the outreach plan, so visiting businesses and organizations would happen in like a few weeks, is that what you're thinking? Um, and as long as everything is ready, yeah, I think so. Okay. And where we're at, we just got um, the contracts back from legal today, actually. So okay. Okay. we have not gotten a chance to <laughs> go review them, but they are on board with the plan that the subcommittee set. Um, and so... We just got to double check all the wording, but we should be like, we're just right there. <laughs> so I yeah. should be, by the end of this week, we should have confirmation. That's all a go. Yeah. Do we want to have anything, uh, like when does it, like it doesn't say when it will happen? You're right, it doesn't. I like that it doesn't say when it will happen and that it directs you to look at the website because mm -hmm. right now we are in a such a fluid this project has been so fluid yeah. for two and a half years yeah. <laughs> that it, boxing us into a date. Yeah. No, put all the dates on the website and that can change so we're not going to have to reprint. A big plan with the brochure was to keep it limited in information. Get, um, get people's attention. Get their attention so that they can go to the website. We, did, we didn't even list all the benefits on this at all that we had on the previous flyer. Those will be on the website. Okay. Is it worth saying spring of 24? Like something at least generic yeah. on there? General yeah. I think so. 20, yeah. Rather, I, I don't think you, you, you wouldn't want to put a date, yeah. a specific date, but I think a general. Or we could just say in 2024. Right. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, I hate to err on the side of caution, oh, yeah. but two and a half years. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. this is beautiful work, Amanda. <clears throat> Thanks. Yeah, good job. Outreach question. Um, for those of us not on the subcommittee who would be helping with this, would we just be doing the initial visiting of the businesses or would we do the follow-up phone calls, mailing, brochures, that type of thing? I would love if you also did follow-up phone calls. Um, obviously, the three of us on the subcommittee have a lot more of the knowledge, but we can certainly send out some information that are common questions that may come up right. as well sure. so that you're much more informed. But you'll have a lot of that info on the website as well, yes. right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think one of the, also one of the things that we talked about as a subcommittee is that, you know, like um, showing up cold it can, can sometimes like not lead to the best results. I'm wondering if folks on the commission also have like warm contacts with any of the businesses within North St. Paul that, you know, like maybe you guys would want to, um, you know, like do in particular, just because, you know, you have a contact. Um, you know, like we were also wondering about certain citizens who might also be partial to this project who could also lend their help in outreach. Yeah. <laughs> I know of a, a citizen. They're, they're, that citizen's in out of town and for most of the summer. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, well. We but we are, we are, yeah, but we are, yeah, but we are uh, accepting purchases until up through November as well. So it's, so it's okay. like, so we, we have time um, for the outreach. So a lot of time. So mm -hmm. that's good, you know, so now we can say, hey, you get this thing in. June or July, and you have until November to make a decision, and then we can, I don't know if we decided if there's tag-ons, like after the cost might just be different, but if they decide late, I don't know, whatever. I think it depends how many purchases we receive. Right. Mm -hmm. Great. If we, if we receive enough by November, I don't mind saying sold out. 
Yeah. Right. Yeah. Wow, this is really great organization. I love it. It's happening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. It's exciting. Good, good. Well, it's it's good, you know, so we it's not happening this year, but it's given more time to be more deliberate in the planning and uh, and uh, make sure we're we're covering every aspect of it. So it's, it looks good. Great work. Thanks. Anything else on Project Snowy? No, does anybody have any other questions for us? I I don't. I'm really I might think of something later. I'm just really happy to see the momentum on this. This mm -hmm. is great. Yeah, I see that I see that little snowy out there out front and I'm like, mm -hmm. will there ever be another one? <laughs> Speaking uh, of that, was there a plan that was pre me? Was there a plan for that one to be decorated? Oh yes. Is there still a plan for that one? To be? Oh, yes. We get asked all the time. So yes, one. that one will be rolled into the project. Okay. And so when we have the call for artists, that's one of the. So this, basically, the city is the first owner of one of these that will be rolled into the project and Wonderful. decorated. Yeah. Okay. And so, I, and it may not sit outside of city hall forever, right? We could right. move that one somewhere else yeah. too. Yeah. Great. Great. Okay. Somehow I have. I switch these around or something. I have murals as item C, but it's the next in order. So, um, Carrie, do you want to give us an update on Project Murals? Well, I did, and then psh, now I got to follow that amazing presentation. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Um, we, we got something going. We got something going. We were rejected for our MRAC grant, so back to the drawing board on <coughs> that. Uh, bummer. Um, but we did pull together a call for artists. We sent that out to 34 muralists around the state. Um, we have some interest already, which is great. We um, have identified the Silver Lake Beach bathroom site as the site. Um, $4,000 for the commission fee for that, including materials. Mm -hmm. We're asking artists to submit their ideas by June 19th, and we'll make a selection by June 30th, and we plan to have the mural completed by the end of August. Um, exciting. Yeah. So I yeah, that, that is fun. exciting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. So yeah. I have a, I actually have a presentation on this that I was oh, going to yeah, just use really nice for the. Um, I would use it for the um, when we go to the Parks Commission, um, but I'll send it to you, Sarah, and you can send it to the commissioners here. Just if. Uh, my email. Did you get feedback from your grant at all that we could learn from? Um, yeah, they just uploaded it, so I haven't downloaded it yet. Okay. So I'm going to do that and check out what they have to say. Okay. I'm sure it's just you're too new and need more info and everything else that's normal in a first grant. But you know. mm -hmm. So Sarah, I sent you a presentation. If you want to send it out to the rest of the group, that'd be great. Yeah, sure. And again, I took the data from your um, box wrap project, yeah. and I coded everything, which was so much fun. I love doing color coding in Excel. And um, we've got eight votes for Silver Lake Beach, five for the Gateway Trail, four for Along 7th, um, four for Love Ice Cream, two for In the Parks, and two for Along Schreier. So we've definitely got um, community interest in a bunch of different places yeah. for future murals. So yeah. It's going to be great. great. So is the plan then to go to the next park meeting? Yes. Okay. So when is that, that one. is June twenty eighth. I mean, did 30. did Laura answer all of their questions already? Um, do they still meet us? <laughs> so that was an interesting meeting, and there were some discussions. Um, Laura answered some of their questions. She was. She said that we were intimidated to go um, present in front of them. Who is? It's Arts Commission, which I thought was. We the, are not. <laughs> for, for the record, oh. no. <laughs> <laughs> she did say that she'd be happy to be the liaison between the commissions um, to pass information, but they kind of did stress they would rather have somebody oh, from our group I'm come. I'm absolutely and, yeah. happy to come and talk to them. Yes, and I've got the presentation, and so I'm hoping that um, maybe then when we meet, the presentation can, can be shared on the screen. You know, I never really did figure out how you'd do the, you know, hook up a computer to this stuff, but... So we could go through it live with them. I know they I, they had mentioned just having it in like public comment section. So I don't know if they want a whole presentation, but I've got one. Um, and I, think I they do. I included in there a lot of information of just the value of public art, um, and how how that can help our city. So, um, 
anyway, so yeah, that's there. And you can feel free, sir, to pass that along to uh, the Parks Commission. I don't know who their uh, staff liaison is. Is that Brandy? Jill. Jill, oh, yeah, Jill, right. Um, but yes, I'm more than happy to come and present. Um, their main question, so just to give you a heads up, was are we doing the three sides? And if so, is there a plan to go on top of the doors, the bathroom doors with the mural? So it, I would, my answer for right now would be, yeah, um, we'll, but we'll see. I mean, it kind of depends on what the artist designs come back looking like, you know, so, um, but, and again, this is just my assumption because of what I think would be cool, and that is to just paint that whole front with, and paint the doors as well. I mean, still you have to have it say, you know, men and women or however it's listed on the thing probably, but you, you need to let people still know there's toilets in there, right? Mm -hmm. But, uh, but yeah, I don't. Okay. Yeah, that seemed to be their main concern. This time that in color, so we didn't go neon colors. And I said, we, we won't. Yes. Probably. It's going to be. <laughs> We're looking for something really horrific. Yep. Really shock the neighborhood. Yes. No, um, no. Uh, we, we put in our uh, request to artists that it would be something that's complementary with the surroundings, um, a natural theme complementary with the surroundings. And so there's close up and then there's backup pictures so the artists can see what the surroundings look like or they can always go and look at it themselves. But um, so, but we've, uh, we, had, we had about six artists, six or eight artists that we had found and then Carrie went and found about 30 more. Um, so really, and it sounds like Carrie's getting some good feedback already. So that's exciting. Um, some really great, great stuff. So I think it can be really neat. Oh, yeah, very exciting. Yeah, yeah. Did you say that you you guys have picked, selected an artist already? Or? We have not, no. Okay. And so they're going to submit designs, and then you guys are going to kind of look at them? Yeah, and that's why I think we'll work with the artist. So if we find somebody that... Um, oh, the style or something? ...fits the bill, you know, so I, it, <clears throat> there's design. We also ask for artists who, who would be willing to engage with the community in some way. So whether that's with allowing, you know, community members to help paint the mural itself or that's coming to a community event to to talk to the residents about painting murals or something i don't know somehow engaging with the community um, that would be a plus for any applicant um, but you know we want to find something that like i said is complementary to the to the neighborhood um, but it also you know uh, is dynamic and vibrant uh, really add something to the community. I have more questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so the you know, like engaging with the community. Are you guys have you guys considered about like um, media opportunities, like publicizing the work, or you know, we like, have not, or the stories, or say like you know, um, depending on what artist you choose, you know, like making that a story right. in itself. Uh, so that's the thought. And then the other was, you know, like how you were saying, would they go paint over the doors? I would actually wonder if it'd be better not to, just because, you know, like I think clearly delineating what is a door for, like those with like low vision or those mm. who like, um, you know, like where it's harder to discern like what is a door, what isn't. I think it just, you know, like having something easier for sure. people to be like, this is a door. <laughs> I would also say upkeep on a door would probably be yeah. more as well. Yeah. yeah. There could be something in between to make it accessible where the door is still outlined but included in the art as well. Yeah, that's I'm I'm hoping an artist comes up with something interesting that way. I, I, I think muralists, the people who have done this a lot have probably run into these situations where you're dealing with some uh, mechanical aspect of the of the canvas that you're dealing with. And how do you maybe you incorporate that into the design itself or or how you work around it? So a good question for the artist. Can I ask um, what the call for artists looked like and what was asked or where you got responses, things like that? Yeah, it was an email. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, we just email the uh, artist directly. Mm -hmm. But yes, I, we can send that to you. Oh yeah, for sure. I think Carrie, right you had now. made some final touch-ups on that email, right? I liked C's question about media and storytelling, and I would love to help with that if, if. Fantastic. When we get there, this is yeah. why. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. This is why we have you two on the commission. It's part of the reason because you're good at this stuff. Um. Okay, let me. You know, just a way to get ACC's name out there as well. Yeah. Are you thinking like once it's being done, once it's when the, when the painting is in progress? Or, I mean, obviously we want to reach out ahead of time, but have media maybe out there for the while it's being executed. Yeah, okay. I think that would be a fun story to watch it be completed, and we could figure out what type of narrative we want and do press releases or pitch it to individual reporters. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, I love the ideas. This is great. Any other good ideas or thoughts or questions? So it's our goal is to get it done by the end of summer. So with our call for artists, we thought it was uh, it would help speed the process by going directly to artists, reaching out to them directly, giving them a deadline, and then coming up with a decision uh, within a couple weeks, I think, after that, hopefully. Um, and I still see it being sort of an, it may be an iterative process, right? So once, we might select an artist with a design idea that then is, could be further developed as needed. For the very reason of like things like working, like how do we work with the doors? What's going to be, what's going to make sense there, and mm -hmm. how do we work with the other colors and things like that? Uh, anything else on that one? Okay, well let's keep going. So next up is the utility boxes, and I know progress is being made there. Yeah, I can speak on that. Okay. Um, so we got the final proofs back. They looked great. So um, they're in production right now, and they're planning to install them the week of Juneteenth, so here in about a week and a half. Um, there's not a firm date yet, but I can send that out when there is so you guys can all go out and check them out. But they look fabulous. So um, it's just the two for now. It is just the bookstore and the one on 3rd and 7th. Um, but it's an exciting... We're getting there. We're real close. <laughs> That's awesome. And so... Where are we then with Roddy's? Is that is the ball in their court, and we just need them to respond? Are they choosing, or can we just choose for them? And I think the ball is back in our court. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if that means we repick images for them um, via the subcommittee. Um, I think, as C talked about before, that might have been the problem is they weren't super thrilled with the images we picked. So. Um, I think it's back in, in our court to pre-propose it to them later, um, which we still do have money for. So we should still be able to do that this year if they would like to. Okay. Um, our city manager did ask that if we could have them pick it, that would be preferred. Right. Um, so I think we should still go that route, uh, but maybe selecting different images or maybe going with a collage or something like that. Okay. Quick question. So were the images that were submitted to Roddy's, were those historical images from the History Center? They sure were. And, okay. Yeah. Uh, so Lisa and I went to the Historical Society mm -hmm. and um, gotten some photos, but, you know, like the images are really just scanned photos. Yeah. And, you know, like I had literally had to like go home and like, you know, cut, cut them out to size so that you could actually see them. So, um, so it was, you know, like selecting appropriate, like, and good historical photos in itself was also like a process. So I would say if, you know, like, I, I think if they, they have a really particular thought, it might require more work um, to really dig through, like, photos that would match their preferences at the Historical Society. Um, 
Yeah, so so I think, you know, like because that would require a lot more time and effort to do so, I think we're we're just gonna put them on hold for now. Um, you know, like I you know, like even if it was to wait for next year, I don't think, you know, like that would I, I don't think I don't see a big problem with that, you know, if if they wanna make sure that it's right. You know, I want to make sure that's right for them as well. So, yeah, uh, we do have, I think, pr- potentially fourteen hundred left over once everything is said and done. Um, so we could still do some additional wrapping this year yet, and um, our little subcommittee can still meet about that. But um, you know, like the yeah, so you know, like we're still looking for quick wins, and remember, this is still like just like. The initial launch, I still think phase two and having like that community input or even like submissions should still come in phase two, which would I would say like next year. So, but um, with the remaining, I think our subcommittee should come up with another idea on, uh, on how to make better use of that. And if not Roddy's, then somewhere somewhere else where we can like experiment or do something sure. mm-hmm. amazing. Okay. The historical images are definitely like Roddy's preference in a way, and that's it kind of limits us, but there could be some outside of the box approaches, like maybe we could have Roddy's staff submit pictures and we can make those into a collage to wrap. So something where like we collect like a number of pictures and so then it's a photo collage of Roddy's people that makes their patrons come and find themselves or, I don't know, like they, they really are, tied to history, but then disappointed with the historical <laughs> images that we have. So we're kind of mm-hmm. stuck, but maybe we can just get a little creative and and figure it out. I think that's a good approach too, is if they submit photos that they like as well, kind of manipulating those to work. Yeah, we just want to make sure it doesn't become an extension of Roddy's and in Roddy's advertisement. Right. That would be my concern. Think outside the utility box. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Amanda. Thank you. Wow. Just keep them coming, Amanda. <laughs> Make sure that's in the meeting we'll notes, be here please. All week. Do you have a mic to drop right now? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's hard. Okay. Okay. Thank you. But we've got. Uh, I also think maybe we can look for. We'll, we'll revisit because we can look for the same way we did with the other box images, maybe open domain that are sports themed, historical themed in general, that could still encapture their feelings without coming from the historical society. Could I comment? Yeah. No. (laughs) Not after that last one. (laughs) Um, (laughs) With the two boxes that are being done, I I saw one of the mock-ups and the same image is being put on each side essentially. I'd love to see a box that has an image that works all the way around rather than it being repeated. So if there's a template that the utility box people can give us for the Roddy's box or any other one, that can be worked with. Yeah, and I think also, you know, like um, each box is a different size. So, Mm -hmm. you know, like how it would look, or like the template would, of course, be different for each, but I I can agree with you, Amanda. I would also like to see one where it's creatively stretched around the whole box instead of being re- the image being repeated. Well, that, that's how I thought they were. They were just Is that something we can ask them, Sarah? I did ask him that with the <coughs> files that we selected. They are not able to stretch them at all. So, can what are the param? Well, can we get the parameters on sure. what that's what's needed for that? Because then so we can something about the. The file that we sent, that it would need to be a different type of file? Yeah, and it wasn't large enough for them to stretch it. The images that we picked really weren't going to work for that. Um, Hmm. He did suggest doing separate images. So if we did historical images, it's a different one on each side, which could work. Um, Yeah, I kind of like that that historical collage idea that you'd walk up to it and then you could really see all kinds of historical photos Mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. But we're talking about the other ones though. So like the the bookstore one and the other one, it's the images repeated on every side? Yes. It's really hard to find images large enough to be stretched all the way around a box like that. Mm -hmm. Um, 
and we, so I was around for the beginning of the search and we were looking, it, it's just hard to find images that big that are free. Or low cost. And when you say yeah. big, what, what does that mean? Like, the, is it the pixels or something? Yeah. Is that what we mean? Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. It is that, and it's also, when you're including the top of it, mm -hmm. it makes it very hard to have any sort of image pull together over the top that's going to look not distorted or that you can actually see. Yeah. So if we decided not to wrap the top, then we could have something more full just go around once. Could but because we <laughs> did the top... I think the pictures, uh, Stacy just showed me the pictures. I think it looks pretty good. I'm not you, saying it's bad. I'm just saying I'd love to see a creative use yeah, of a box. Of space. Yeah. Yeah. I was surprised that they weren't wrapped because I feel like some of that imagery we were selecting intentionally to have it wrapping. going yeah. all the way around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But right. it's good feedback. We were, we're not, I'm not yeah, a graphic we're, professional. We're all learning so. on this stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's yeah, great. Yeah. And I think if we do end up having people actually go out and paint it, by yeah. hand, that's going to solve that issue because it'll look nice. Are we talking about that? We could do that. It is an option. Oh. Mm -hmm. okay. We adopt a, the, what Carrie sent, adopt a utility box where mm. down on Minneapolis where they were. Mm. They, and then they had like a QR code for the artist. Cool. Yeah. Well, I think it's good. And I think, you know, we're starting with having a phased approach. So we're learning a lot the first time through. And then we can take what we learned for the second time and then the third time or whatever. So I think there are lots of opportunities for these things. And That's right. So we don't have to, like, replace all of them. And right. At the same time. Right. Okay. Anything else, then, about the utility boxes? Okay. Um, art cart. Uh, so th the only thing I would say about this is so Friday night at the car show, is anybody else... A available to join. I think Lisa said there are, we have the two volunteers who will be running the thing. Mm -hmm. And then Carrie's going, I'm going. Anybody else right. going to make it on Friday? This I might mean, make it later okay. in the evening. I think we only keep the art <clears throat> cart open for a couple hours. Yeah. yeah. Right? What time, what time does it even open? Do we know? Um, I mean, we can get there as early as four, but I think the car show starts at six. Oh. So even if it's six to eight that we have the art card open or six to nine, it's yeah. okay, I think. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I might be able to make it for the later half, but yeah. I think the biggest concern is getting the, the doors open and closed. Mm -hmm. The big, the big one. Yeah, yeah. kind of heavy. I'm a maybe. Okay. I, I'll do what I can. Um, Sarah, were you, did you have anything to add on the art cart? The only thing for this Friday is the aprons came too. Oh. So oh I didn't, they're in the art cart, so I don't have them. So if, when the volunteers are there, they can. Great. And it's on, Lisa said that she organized the art cart and it's all ready to go or something. That's wonderful. Yeah, great. Um, anything else on art cart? Toilet paper rolls. Did we settle that last week? Do you still have all I these? I sure do you? still have it. <laughs> I could have, yeah. Maybe, maybe I'm if I can swing by before... Um, going to my event, I I might drop it off. No, no, don't don't drop them off on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Just bring them by Sarah's office on <laughs> Drop them on her desk. Uh, paint and sip. Uh, Carrie, do you have any update on that no, one? No, I don't think we have a rescheduled date for this. Some are just kind of. We it says sometime in June, but we didn't. Yeah, uh, I don't think that's happening. Okay. Um, Autumn Arts Festival. Amanda, you want to uh, talk everybody uh, through this one? Yeah. Right now we are waiting to hear on funding. I don't know if Sarah has more information. Um, Sarah from the Parks Commission was speaking with someone on the funding as whether we can get additional funding for the event this year. Um, once we hear about that, then we can make more decisions going forward. We have the call out for artists still, so if you know any artists who are looking to pres or have a space at the event, we are s still have that out until June 26th at the, well, right now, but we may extend the deadline. Um, we are meeting our little subcommittee about the layout at the park later this month. And then I did want to extend an invitation if anybody would like to 
Um, I am personally attending two festivals this month that would be a good example for this art fair. One of them is this coming weekend, Excelsior Art on the Lake. And then uh, the Egan Art Festival, which is the last weekend of the month, June 25th and 26th, I think it is. That one would be a very good example of what I'd want to do here. Mm. So if anybody would like to attend those events. Egan Arts Festival. Mm -hmm. uh, what are the dates of that one? Uh, June, I think it's 25th and 26th. Okay. It's the Saturday and Sunday. I do. I did get some feedback. So we have vendors, the 15 or so that have registered already, are starting to reach out and saying, hey, we really need to know if we're approved or not. Um, yeah. It can are we okay to approve the ones that have come through so far? No, <laughs> no. Okay. I mean, Tom and I can take a look at it, but I don't want to accept everyone who's applied because we want to make sure that we have variety. And if there's too many who have applied in a certain category, I don't know if we have that issue yet. Okay. We want to make sure that there's some variety there. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll hold them off a little longer. Thank you. Yeah. Um. And then also we're looking for live performers. Um, Sarah, talk to Cece um, because she said her dance group wanted to do something and I said, do you have some contact information? And she said she sent something to you? And I don't know. Yes, and I thought I forwarded it, but if I didn't, I will. Okay, if, could you take a look again? Because I don't yes. know if I remember seeing that. Yep. Um, but I want to start uh, making outreach to these different groups. And if anyone has any other uh, groups, so I've got Inspiration Performing Arts Center, that's the CC's group. Uh, Fusion Drumline, Carrie, that's one you mentioned, right? Yeah. So who's, is that? Um, that's a 622 group. Is Hammer, does Hammerman lead that or who? Pavloni, Mr. Pavloni. At North Saint, North um, High? He's at John Glenn. At John Glenn, okay. Yeah. Other band director. Um, so, um, so I wonder like, if I could get some contact information. Yeah, get your contact information. That'd be great. Someone mentioned in indigenous roots. I don't know where that came from. Native American drum dance. But then there's also the. Uh, uh, I saw something. I think it was in the in the North High yearbook. There were some pictures of the Mexican dance folk dance group, um, because that they they came and uh, they came for the last one, um, and it's a husband and wife, and the husband teaches at South Saint Paul, I think, or. Maybe South St. Paul High School, I can't remember. Um, but so he has the group at that school and she has the group here, I think. That's cool. Right, so it would be nice to get some of those uh, North St. Paul kids involved, yeah. so I'll reach out to them. Um, and also looking for some live artist demonstrations too, like a ceramics demonstration was one that we had. And But if anybody knows of anything, let me know. And then we'll also have a live band, hopefully, to wrap it up. And there's no uh, stipend for performers, correct? So we're we're trying to see if there can be this oh, year. Okay. It's still small stipend, but as we put together a, a budget to try and say, well, what would everything cost if we did it the way we wanted to, at least right now? I mean, it's a pretty modest budget, yeah. you know. And so there's there's money that is in the events fund, but we can't just like drain that whole thing for this. Yeah. Um, we maybe could use part of that. So that's where we are looking to the city council to see if some additional funds could be allocated for this, knowing that we would get some money that would come back from the artist fees um, that could be, that could help replenish that fund going forward. I do have and I hope exciting update um, on this too. Um, as you guys, most of you probably know Carrie Erpenbach, who's been doing communications here for yep. a couple mm -hmm. years. She actually got officially hired as a city staff person last week. Oh, nice. Um, so part of her job is event coordinating. Oh. Therefore, she will be kind of taking the lead on coordinating all of the events for the city. Um, so for the Autumn Arts Festival, she will be executing it as far as coordinating whatever she needs to do with public works or whatever we need to oh. do to coordinate it, coordinating a stage, whatever that looks like. Um, that will not be me, that will be her. Okay. Um, but I will still serve as mostly the liaison between our commission okay. and her. Um, 
There are two things, though, she would like to be invited to the subcommittee meetings. Not that okay. she'll be able to go to all of them, but she sure. would at least like to um, have the opportunity to, as well as the walkthrough for the layout. Um, so okay. if Sarah you have your emails. emailed about the walkthrough with you, I think. Yes. Okay. So I can um, send that on to her. Okay. Um, but yeah, just moving forward, um, I think it's going to be really exciting. Her background is in events. So yeah, it'll be great to get her input on the layout for sure. Yes. Um, so I think, yeah, that'll be great. The She also wants to start to get a jump start on next year. I know we haven't even done this year. Um, but kind of what the goal is going to be to give you a heads up is once we have our event in September, the very next commission meeting here, she will be attending and we're going to start planning for next year um, to try to get a good jump on things. So that, that's what um, I was hoping for is once we get a I would hope that once we get a good system in place, it can right. just be a click and repeat for the next year. Yes. With yeah, just small modifications. So yeah. um, and then she she asked if. With that plan, if we could have pretty much everything set by the 1st of 2024 so she can start doing promotions, start getting her contacts going, and we can make our jobs a little bit easier, too. So, um, what a Can great she reach resource. out to any other artists who would like to apply? <laughs> she sure can. <laughs> she sure can. She is the one that runs the St. Pete's Festival, yeah. too, so she's got, yeah. I wonder if any of them would like to do two weekends in a row, right? <laughs> So yeah, very exciting. Congratulations, Carrie, <laughs> and the city. Yeah, she such was a great resource. Retired. Yeah, she was. Yeah, she was trying, but we dragged her back. In. <laughs> she is only part time, but still, it's great to have her. Oh, okay. There. Which she does in twenty weeks. Someone does in forty, or in twenty hours. Someone yeah. does in forty. So yeah, she's she's yeah. phenomenal. She really is. That's cool. We're very lucky. Yeah, so, well, that kind of changes a lot, I think, Amanda. I think about, like, the administrative and marketing, you know, um, you know, that can be. Have we taken everything away from the parks? Except the food truck? <laughs> kind of. I don't know. I got Sarah for signage under administrative yes. and marketing. Yes. Food and concessions, I have Laura. Vendors, I have you. Live performers, me. And then the location planning is everybody. Yeah. So between location, location, logistics, and then marketing and administration, I think Carrie could really help out on that. Definitely. So we have a work improvement plan for this, Sarah. So <laughs> we can get that to Carrie and help her on that. Yeah, absolutely. If, and if you have the what I sent you, I think if do you are you able to access that li on the shared document? Because as I update it, then you should be able to just see updates. I don't know if I have accent. You might have to send that to me. Okay. Again, and then, then I don't have to bug you for it. There's Tom, still. Tom, I did not get your email. You didn't? No. I didn't get yours either with the PowerPoint. So. Hmm. Okay. Maybe you're not connected to the internet. I don't know. Anyway. Um, I'll try that again. Okay, so let's uh, let's uh, pick it up then where we left off. So I think that was the last thing, Autumn Arts Festival. So that gets us through all the project updates. That's a lot of updates. That's a lot more than I was expecting. So great work, everybody. Um, we got a lot going, mm -hmm. you know. And it's interesting. So now we're going to get into this 2024 budget discussion. Sarah, I'm hoping you can kind of help us out with this. And I think you added in the packet just kind of my brief little um, mock-up here it's just so that everyone can see what we're looking at here. Is it on here? It's the last page, maybe, yeah. So what they're asking for this year is that uh, what is the description of the item? What's the funding request? Is this a new or ongoing thing? And what is the justification for this? And um, what I can do, I also have our budget uh, request uh, that we use for this year. Um, so we can kind of compare this. But does everyone have that sheet with the, this, you know, so this is just a first draft here. So you can see there are blank spaces it's in okay. there. It's okay, I got, I, I'm looking at it on my computer. Okay, great. Um, so you can see what I've got on here so far. None of this, th this is all just kind of carried over from the other one. So there's, I, I don't have any 
specific thoughts about these numbers or anything. It's just kind of we can come, we can come up with whatever we want with. And I think Sarah, our purpose here today is trying to sort of flesh know. this out a little yeah, bit more. Yeah, get this right? kind of nailed down, and um, Brandy's then going to take it and present it to council. So. What's a total number that's like shooting for Mars instead of the moon? Like what's what's a good total you know what I mean? Is there Yes, such but a I thing? don't know if there's a good answer for that. Whatever we think is justifiable. Justifiable, yep. I don't see anything for the murals on this yet. Yeah, there's not anything for murals on here yet. Um, and you know, this is one thing where, you know, Carrie, I haven't talked to you about this, but I was thinking more along the lines of 10000 for a mural. Yeah. Um, and then if we get a grant, it could be money that's returned to the city, yeah. you know, potentially. Um, so that's, and rather than having mural project one, mural project two, I think it would be one single mural project um, at 10000 so I can, I'll add that in here. <clears throat> you can, so here's what we had for this year. Mural project one, $2,000. Mural project two, $2,000. What we are doing right now for our one mural project that kind of dropped in our lap with the Silver Lake project is we combine those. And so we're saying it's 4,000 inclusive of materials for the artists to do this. And so we've already got some artists interested, which is great because I thought artists would be like four grand, forget it. Mm -hmm. um, so I think this is good. Item number three was art installation, $2,000. That money is not earmarked for anything yet. Um, we had utility box wraps, $4,000. Project Snowy, $1,000. Art cart supplies, $500. And branding and communications, $500. So, any of those things where I where it was kind of carry over where we knew those things would happen this uh, next year as well, I added those. So utility box wraps phase two, four thousand dollars again. If that's if you want that number to be different, let's talk. Project Snowy, thousand dollars. If we need that number to be different, let's talk. Um, art cart supplies, branding and communication, autumn arts festival. You know, here's where Amanda, I'm like, I don't. Do we even include that on here? I don't know. Oh, I can answer that. Great. So <coughs> to put it simply, there's a park and rec budget, there's an arts commission budget, and then there's an event budget that was new to us this year. Right. What this would get, what our proposed number would be is something that would be included in the event budget, not ours. So we can still make a proposal of what we think would be great, but it would not actually come out of the arts commission budget. It would come out of right. the events budget. Can I ask a question with that? Yep. Um, I'll say what I thought. I thought it was like a five, the events budget was 5000 yearly. Just that's what we put in this event budget. Um, would what we request be taken out of that 5000 or on top of the 5000 It would be instead of the 5000 So if we decide as a whole for every event, this event budget includes music in the parks, mm -hmm. right. probably our paint-along events. Um, so any supplies or if we... Probably the what? Paint-alongs, paint sips. Oh, oh yeah. So if right. we decide to hire an artist... That okay. Out of that budget, um, that would be the total. So if we decide for everything, it's we need twelve thousand dollars. That's what we would pitch to. Okay. City Council. And that's what would go in that event budget, then. Correct. Yes. Okay. So I'm gonna just. Okay. So, Autumn Arts Festival, and then, like paint and sip, those would be considered events. Correct. Okay. And so, so if right now there's a five thousand dollar budget for events. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't really even considering the Autumn Arts Festival or Paint and Sip. Then I would say, hey, if there's 5000 because the parks is coming up with 5000 for music in the parks, and we say, okay, well, we also need 5000 for the Autumn Arts Festival, and we need $1,000 for Paint and Sip or whatever, mm -hmm. then we would just, we would, we want to itemize those in ours, though, and say, please add these yeah, to the event budget? Yeah, and then I'll separate them Okay, different, great. Yeah. Okay. So, um... Should we have it in the same line, in the same format here, or I can separate these a little bit? Either way you want to do okay. it is totally fine. Yep. So, and because would we say it's part of our total budget request, or would we say there's a separate budget request for the events? Separate okay. Budget. Yep. Okay. So, that, Autumn. 
arts one is tough because you guys haven't like executed it in the new model yet. No, but we kind of have an, a, a budget set for what we want to do this right. year. Yeah. Um, it, the confusing part to me would be what comes out of, or what will the parks be requesting as, do you know? It would kind I mean? of mirror that. So the person that's managing the event budget is also the staff liaison for the Yeah, so they, so okay. they could merge, We're gonna merge the yeah. Yeah, yeah. line items, right? So if we're requesting something for Autumn Arts and then they're requesting it too, so I don't. What do you think, Amanda? Should, I, should we just put five thousand? That's for, what I was thinking. I mean, we think forty-two for this year, and that's and us that's maybe with, holding again. back on a few things. Could we go to six just to have a? Little you know, and that's funny that you said six because Park and Rec, uh, our the staff liaison estimated about six total between okay. arts and Park and Rec for the Autumn Arts Festival alone. Okay. Okay. Six thousand. So we're kind of right. Well, let's say I'm six then. There. Okay, I'll put six thousand okay. because you know I think it it changes the overall capability of what you can do. Like right now, we can get a band that's a that's a good fun band that's really cheap because it's the uncle of someone who's you know mm. that was used to be on the parks commission, right? And that's great. Mm -hmm. But you know, if we had more money, we could get. We could have an event kind of band, you know, and have some a bigger show. Well, and we have also a larger stipend to give our performing artists. Um, yeah. Shoot, there was one other thing I was going to. Because I'll tell you, is that <clears throat> it makes a difference. Like, so, I've spent a, a lot of my life in in theater, and most of it I did for free. And the times when I got paid, even if it was like a hundred dollars, just to say, hey, here's a hundred bucks for, it was like. Wow, thank you, you know. So it's nice to be able to pay artists, even if it's a little bit, to just recognize their gas money, if nothing else. Mm -hmm. My question would be then with artist fees, is that I know the artist fees that we collect this year will go towards next year. Is that going to be considered lumped into that 6000 or on top of? On top of. Oh, Great. It's going to be a hell of a party next year. Yeah. No, no. I'm going to uh, buy a coffee. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, do we start at the top of the sheet and just go down one by one? Yeah, so do, let's talk about utility wrap. So we're looking at 4,000 again. I mean, I just carried it over. Uh, what are we thinking about for next year on that? Can we do 5,000? <laughs> we can. I think What's the justification? Um, you, you know, like 4,000 was a good starter budget just to kind of get us off of, you know, but next year we're, we're looking for like, um, community engagement and not only that but you know like if we are looking at like potentially just having artists paint as well contribute you know like I think artists fees uh, we, we want to support our artists so uh, we want to make sure we have enough budget for that um, yeah. or if we have to or if we want to purchase some images to use that are the correct size that can wrap all the way around. Also, I don't know if folks saw, but um, when we had initially posted the images, and we might have already discussed this um, on social media, there were a few comments from folks who didn't love the options. And so that could be some justification that, okay. you know, we heard from the public that maybe we need to invest a little bit more in <coughs> our image options or art options. So I, I just added those notes into the justification. Okay. Um, so I have justification for this. It's highly popular and relatively low cost way to add visual interest to public spaces, looking to expand community engagement and possibly pay artists to paint directly on boxes uh, and other images may be more costly for copyright. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. Sound good? Can you add that E into interest? I noticed what? as well. <laughs> oh, you're looking at it live? No, it's Visual um, printed. Oh, oh yeah, okay. Thank you. Everybody's a freaking editor. I know. <laughs> I know. Okay. 
Okay. Um, anything else on utility box, perhaps? Um, project Snowy, so it, as you see, it just says to cover ancillary costs, delivery fees, signage. I would advocate for more. Um, 2,500 maybe? 2,500 sounds like a great number. Does that sound like a good yeah. nice number? I say so, I, you know, like also because, you know, Snow Project Snowy is a big project and we've been trying to get this, you know, completed and for us to not invest in this big project that we've been trying to get off the ground for so long, I think it, it would say something if we didn't, you know, have the money to do things. So can you tell, can, any other examples of like things that we would do? So if clear I'm coat. saying cost, delivery fees, signage. Oh yeah. Clear coat. I mean, 2024 is the year of snowy, right? So we have to have all of our expenses mm -hmm. in 2024, I would think. And did, have we spent some money from the snowy budget? Remind me, sorry. I don't think so this year. So we can say justification that in 2023, the, the project wasn't off the ground or organized in a way to justify expenses. We'd also like to have a ribbon cutting ceremony. Yeah, I was going to say. That could also lump that's, into a. That's where I'm just thinking like programming. Mm -hmm. you know, that programming could, could cause. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Signage is not cheap. Okay. No. Okay. Okay, so to cover ancillary costs, for example, delivery fees, signage, clear coat, programming. Does that work? Yep. Okay. Um, art cart supplies. So Carrie is going to apply for a grant for our art cart. That's a, she found a kind of a niche uh, grant that would be for where we're bringing art to the people and art cart qualifies for that one. Um, so I think this is something we need to keep in mind when we do, if we do go and present, if there's an end of the year thing to the council, we used, commissions used to do that. There would be like an end of year in January, there'd be a, Follow up in the commissions. We kind of coming back. it's coming back. Yeah. Good. I, I think that's a good thing to have. Um, but we can talk about. Hey, you know, here are how many grants we've applied for so far. Here's how many more that we can apply for. Um, you know, so we're trying to get other funding sources. Um, so anyway, art cart supplies, five hundred bucks. I don't know. I feel like we should bring that up a little bit because I, I feel like right now we're at like the bare bones level, but if we just put a little bit more money into it, maybe we could actually hire an artist to lead. So instead of toilet paper rolls, we have paper, <laughs> paper towel, towel rolls. <laughs> Hang yep. on. Same wavelength. Oh, <laughs> See, get to work. <laughs> no, my husband uses paper towels like nobody's been. <laughs> Y'all should have said something. <laughs> Start now. I feel like him now. that's one of our most visible projects so yeah, far, yeah. too. Um, and maybe we can add refreshments or something fun mm -hmm. for $500, right? Maybe so our rationale here then. Uh, so our cart more frequently. Yeah. What are we thinking here? Double it? A thousand? Yeah, uh, for sure. Double everything. Okay. I mean, would it, be, you know, like also for, um, I know like right now we have volunteers doing it. They are doing it out of the goodness of their hearts. They're transporting themselves there and back, you know, and taking a lot of time there. Is there something to kind of like incentivize m more volunteers in a monetary type of way or otherwise? So that makes them not volunteers. Yeah. But what about like a partnership with an elementary education art program mm -hmm. that it's like a summer internship that they run the art cart and manage it, do all the projects, a have idea. a budget, mm -hmm. et cetera. I mean. Yeah, and they could be part of the planning from the get-go so that there's like, you know, mm -hmm. programming, like they've done a curriculum, whatever it is. Yep. Yeah. I love it. It's a great idea. Mm -hmm. I know we had, we did reach out to Century College in the last couple of years, and it's, what's tricky about higher ed is most faculty are on nine month appointments and so they're not there in the summertime or they're in centuries case they retreat to working in their studios and they're not doing administrative things and then they fight up against this pressure of teaching during but not just year. faculty you can look at recent elementary ed graduates mm -hmm. yeah okay so i have uh art cart supplies a thousand dollars this is ongoing 
The art cart brings art directly to the people, especially children. We would like to increase funding to improve the quality of the programming, including better supplies and possibly payments to artists to lead sessions with children. Beautiful. Okay. Branding and communication, five hundred dollars. That'd be at least a thousand. Yeah. We need more t-shirts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is when you ask for the money. You got to ask for all yeah, you can get. Yeah, it doesn't hurt to ask. Well, and then they cut. You know, volunteer t-shirts. I think. I think those are an incentive to volunteer. Like if you, mm -hmm. if every volunteer yeah. gets a t-shirt, <laughs> he's like, no, I don't want a t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing with that is managing the inventory. Then no, I know everybody yeah. wants larges, but like if they got a mug or something, oh or sure, whatever, or even just stickers that say yes, yes, like the website or yeah, even just stickers, things like that, signage to go near every snowy. Um, that advertise the ACC, um, a, a giant sticker for the art cart, maybe with the logo. Um, there is, there are two now. Oh, there are. Okay, yes. uh, photographers at events, maybe. Yes. We could commission. I, I, I was taking notes on this for a while, thinking about it. Uh, All right, make that one two thousand. Yeah. yeah. Commission oh. somebody to make a video at an event. There's, I mean. There's lots of potential possibilities, and even I, you think about website stuff. Yeah, maybe right. That's a big one. All right, how much is this going to cost me? No, um, <laughs> well, so. I have a question about the website stuff. So, are we able to pay somebody to do work on the website outside of, or would that be like Carrie's job? That is Carrie's job. Okay. Yep. So she has the ability to do video. Um, she does photography. She can also do all the website stuff. So if we want to go above and beyond that, that's a, certainly a conversation for photography and video, but for website, that's... Uh, yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Um, but we could, yeah, if we wanted, like, graphic design for anything, any event signage... A signage is signage or um, if we want to make like a calendar a graphic calendar of ACC events to share with the public something like that oh that's a cute that would be Calendar's so a cute idea like have art submitted by didn't they do that at Maplewood they might have years ago. by residents and then we could yeah. put out a calendar yeah, yeah. that's cute it could be a calendar of the ACC projects too. Yeah, yeah. it could be both. Yeah. They could be mixed together. Would we would we ever like be at events like have our own booth and then we could hand out like tote bags with our branding on them to like, I'm just yeah. now that we're on a spiel of like one of my hopes branding. for the arts festival is to have an information booth for yeah. at the festival <laughs> so we would be there. You get free stuff. That. Mm -hmm. Stickers. Yeah. Back to the stickers. Cool. Bag. And like at the farmer's market, they sell those shopping bags. Like you can buy them. So we could have totes that people could buy. Is that mm -hmm. too messy? Free. A little messy, but I can certainly ask and see how that could look. Yeah. I know a great place to get a great deal. I'll look at pricing. So <laughs> 2000 just still seems a little high. So I mean, we'd be quadrupling. Well, maybe we're taking something like maybe some of these items are going into those budgets. So if we're handing it out at the festival, it's actually a festival budget. Mm -hmm. And right, but we also don't have the mural project on here yet. Mm -hmm. we're add another ten. Well, she said to shoot for the I, moon. Yeah. What? She said to shoot for the moon. Maybe putting branding at, f at a thousand. So I think what I Emily, I think your ideas are super phenomenal and. Before this meeting, Carrie Urbanbacher was a contracted city staff, and we were kind of limited to what we could ask her collaboration and support with. Now she's a paid city employee, so I feel like that opens the doors to a bit more flexibility. Even with her being part-time, she is pretty efficient. So it might, if we double the branding communications budget, try to double it for this year, see how it goes with... Mm -hmm. with Carrie's additional support. Agreed, yeah, that's what I'm thinking too, because if she can do a lot with website and things like that, and mm -hmm. she's helping out a lot that way, I mean, that helps with a lot of, um, a lot of our branding awareness. I have a quick question about yeah. budget. 
Um, so say like if we, we have these earmarked, right? And say like next year we want to readjust where it's allocated, could we do that? Within our own budget, yeah. yeah. Okay, so like, so like say like um, we had branding and communications at 2000 but then we realized, oh, mural's gonna cost a little more. Could we do like, okay, we're gonna leave 500 branding and communications and move 1500 in. Okay, great. Yeah, so, um, which is what we're doing this year to see, like we had mural project one, mural project two, we were just saying, well, yeah, it's, yeah. it's one thing. Um, what, we're, what we're not touching right now, because there's at least been three subcommittees who have talked about this money, <laughs> um, is the art installation, $2,000. So that's kind of some potential flex money for us this year. Mm -hmm. So whether that's for utility box or something else, I mean, we, we, we have that money. And, it, and if we don't use it, we don't use it, and that's, that's okay, too. Um, so 2024, so here's what I got so far. Utility box wraps phase two, $5,000. Project Snowy, 2,500. Art cart supplies, 1,000. Branding and communications, 1,000. Mural project, 10,000. And that's getting us to 19.5. The only thing I would say, Carrie, about the mural project is should we try and identify a specific location for this? I mean, should we try and be more specific about this one? Sure, we could. And just say, we want to do a mural at this place, mm -hmm. period. Where would you want it to be? I don't know. I think council would find that more well received if we had a agreed some sort of a because otherwise high level plan, right? Yeah. So I don't know if they'll approve for that for a private business. It might have to be a public mm -hmm. spot. What was the other locations that were? Gateway Trail, uh, somewhere along 7th. But I thought Gateway, we had some issues. With right, because I think that's DNR. not city property. Somewhere in the parks and along Schreier. Um, yeah. But I think, you know, rationale I mean, we can put a rationale, what's the value of a mural, but I think, I think, so here's what I think we should do, Sarah. I can give this to you updated as, as is, but then Carrie, I think we should try and, okay. we should try and identify a location and clarify that. Okay. Um, and then, hey, maybe I could give you my slide on all of the reasons why public art is good for the city of North St. Paul. Mm -hmm. um, you can, that can go along with our budget submission. Mm -hmm. um, anything else then? So yes. <laughs> here we go. I mean, what do you got, C? Amanda, back me up here. All I right. thought we said something about culture. Yes, OK. Huh. Oh, I'll I, back you up I on have that a too. comment. Yeah, a few. Um, I would love to see a plan in place to have community feedback from other cultures um, and what we should do, whether that's an event, a project. I think we need a project on our calendar for next year that is not art focused, whether that more culture focused. We More culture focused. It doesn't need to not have art, but it would be great if it um, celebrated the diversity in our city because it is large. So, okay, if we're, if we're going to go down that road, then you got to tell me what's your definition of culture, because to me, the arts festival last year was an arts and cultural event. I would agree. So and. And I think it can be this year as well. So when we have, you know, different cultures represented in, you know, we had we had Indian culture, we had Mexican culture, um, we did we didn't have any, um, you know, Hmong groups or anything like that, which I would love to have because I think we have a large community here. Um, but to me, that's part of cultural expression. 
And Part of yes. So what are we looking? What when we're t saying? I mean, I'm all f I'm all for it, but where does it fit, and what does it look like? Part of it, for me, as this white woman coming to this table, is I don't have all of the answers. So I would love getting feedback from the community and leaders in each group that whether there is, are holidays or certain celebrations that they celebrate that we can focus on, or if it's just down to we have Hmong days and we celebrate Hmong food or other events that are important to that culture. Again, I don't have the answers mm -hmm. because I'm not a part of that community of that community. Mm -hmm. But if we call in leaders in that community, people who are willing to give us their feedback on what they'd like to see, that's something I was would be interested in. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say, I think one easy way we could implement it a little bit is we're, we're the Arts and Culture Commission, but a lot of our titles for things are arts focused. So even though the Autumn Arts Festival it includes both. We just call it an arts festival. So, what if we thought about calling it Autumn Arts and Culture Festival? So that piece is called out and letting people know that we're thoughtfully including that. It's not just that happens to be featuring different cultures. The, yeah, that's one idea. I just wanted more. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I agree with that. Um, you know, like, and I don't mind that as much either, but like Amanda was saying, you know, like, um, you know, like, we, we make art stand by itself. How come we don't have something to make culture stand by itself as well? Sure. And, uh, you know, like, I, I, I just remember one time when Lisa was like, we are the arts, arts and culture commission. You know, like, if we were just the arts commission. Yeah. Then, uh, you know, so, and I kind of, I know it's a this is a good discussion, and I I'm I'm all for this stuff, but I also think <laughs> about like when we first got started, it's like, and this is in our Bible? mission statement somewhere, but it's uh, artistic and cultural expression, and so for me when I think it, the inclusion of the word culture in our title seemed to me to be. Um, how we include cultural artistic expression and and, I, and right. it meant diversity in the in the artistic expression, but it was all absolutely art agree. in a sense. You know. Yes, what I mean? absolutely agree. Uh, you know, like because we are not the DEI commission, right? <laughs> I understand that, um, but you know, like I, you know, sometimes like there needs to be more DEI work too, and uh, you know, like we should include more of that in our work. And, you know, maybe we should have art that's specifically DEI, you know? Or, you know, like something that focused towards DEI. And so I, you know, like like Amanda was saying, it doesn't have to be something like huge. It could just be, um, you know, something acknowledging the different, you know, like cultures, but in like <clears throat> regarding their like arts, yeah. right? Like what, what kind of things that they, have. Maybe we have art cart projects, right? That it's, reflective. It's, yes. Exactly, and that's so. Because I even think about like the mural project. It's like, mm -hmm. well, it's a golden opportunity on a public space to include the cultures of North St. Paul that are represented in our demographics. I just don't believe that our commission can represent all of those and can make those decisions without getting input from people in oh, those communities. Yeah, sure. So I'd yeah. love to see some, however we do it, we invite people from these communities. Community engagement. Yeah. Can we do a community advisory board, $2,500 for a community advisory board that we convene and have them. So, but you don't, you can, you're not, but you're not, you're not, you're not going to pay those people. No, but you're no, going to no. have refreshments and you're going to so, give them food and you're going to give so, them a bus pass if they need it, you know. Okay, so I'm trying to think: Is this would we include it in branding and communications, or would we do no, this? No, I think it would be a whole different line item. Community engagement, community advisory board, and we would. And the purpose is to seek feedback and input on from the diverse cultures in our community. Yeah, but hang on: a community advisory board suggests that it's a long-term thing. 
a standing, like a subcommittee of this committee? I think it'd be more sure. like community listening sessions mm -hmm. in a way. Community town hall. Yeah. Or just to. Well, I think previously, one of my first meetings here, Stacy, you brought up inviting them to come to our commission meetings, people of other cultures. And even if we could execute that, it doesn't even have to be a special meeting. It can be come here and present to us your ideas, your thoughts. But even that can be a barrier, you know? I mean, if, yeah. if you're not available on these nights because you work nights or you, you're disabled or you don't feel comfortable because you don't speak the language, you know? Absolutely. Intimidating because it's a city hall and you're meeting. We're so intimidating. Yeah. I, I see no, what everyone intimidated. is saying and right. <laughs> yeah, we're intimidated. Um, I, I would, so my point of saying, including culture in the festival name is, my thought is we could do separate items and I would love to see us be more thoughtfully incorporating this into the projects that we currently have. Exactly, so, but I think that the point that Amanda's making is we're all mostly white people. Right, so what I'm getting at oh. is that maybe it's not just come people of different communities and tell us what we should be doing different at one town hall event. What if it's for each project we go through a process to make sure that we're incorporating um, input from the communities that we're trying to reach and being thoughtful about those DEI elements specifically so that it's not just a separate siloed piece of what we're doing, it's being incorporated into every single project. So when you look at the demographics of our city, I mean, it's 60% white. So how are you going to identify people? Are they self-identifying? Are you going out to everyone's house? I mean, I, I guess I'm just looking for more specifics on what you're thinking. I'm not saying don't do the single feedback event. I'm saying that I would like to see it incorporated more into our current projects so it's not separate, separated mm -hmm. out. It's not a, a standalone item. I'm going to make a suggestion. And I think this is really great conversation. It's probably long overdue. Um, but I, I, I'm wondering if we can't make this as a, uh, a an a, a agenda item for next month, and let's just so okay. If do we want to if we want to add a line item for community engagement, what's that funding request? What's the justification? And let's just get that budget thing done for this. Sarah, this do you month. know Is when they okay? held the they they the city actually hired that person to do the community center town hall, right? Craig like Lambert? they contracted him? It was, yeah. Uh, and it, how, what was like the budget around that? Or what was the total? I do not know, but I can find that out. Is there anyone within the city <clears throat> departments that their job is specific to reaching you know, the diverse communities of North St. Paul or focusing on DEI work so we don't have to reinvent the wheel. We could kind of come in with some knowledge about who we're trying to reach and how we could reach some of those folks. Unfortunately, there, there wouldn't be anybody okay. focused on that right now. Are there any other initiatives or plans within the city to... For DEI-related type yeah, of things? Yeah, more engagement across commissions, across the council? Not that I'm aware of currently. So let's do it. Notes. Let's 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 be the ones to start it. Message, Carrie. I'm still hung up about your text. I don't even know what I sent you. You didn't. You, you don't remember sending me pictures of that brochure about? Is it not your phone number? Am I thinking of someone else? I don't know. Tell us more. <laughs> I compartmentalize everything. See, I don't know what I do from day to day. This. All she did was she sent me like she she texted me pictures and asked me, what did I think about the, this, like, it was like this um, brochure from, like, Maplewood, where they were having community engagement with, like, oh DEI with um, their police force or something. Uh -huh. And I was, and I mulled over it for a while, Carrie. You did, you thought like, about that. And I was like, oh my gosh, Carrie, that is, like, the most brilliant idea ever. Because, you know, if you, you know, like, if you want to, like, be an inclusive, you know, like, community, you have to build inclusivity into the things you think you do, you know? Because you're right. We can't be doing it as a commission. We can't be having it as an add-on with everything we're doing. 
So it's got to be baked into what we're doing. But if we're the only commission thinking about it or talking about it, and city council isn't even talking about it, and the staff isn't. Yes. Sorry. It's no dip. No dip. No. Uh, join Maplewood's Multicultural Advisory Committee. Our team works collaboratively to enhance relationships between police and the community, specifically with underrepresented communities, immigrants, refugees, people of color, indigenous people, and the faith community. So it's run through the police, it sounds like, but they're looking for candidates to attend monthly meetings, participate in outreach, accept people from different backgrounds, have existing community connections, and be willing to foster new ones, and work cooperatively with the police in enhancing relationships among all cultures. Live, work, worship, or be connected to Maplewood. I think that's pretty groundbreaking for Maplewood. That's some of the best stuff I've seen come out of there in a long time. I'm sorry. <laughs> Not saying you, a whole lot. Not, <laughs> <laughs> anyway. And, yeah, and you you know, like St. Paul has their um e, you know, like their DEI type of advisory committees. And you know, like you know, of course they're a larger city, but you know, like we are pretty much metro. You know, we have all the all those different types of people here in our community as well. And for us to not, you know, like have something even remotely similar or anything that would like that you would hear from different voices within the community you know like you're you're missing out on a chance mm -hmm. you hit the nail on the head with hear their voices yeah. I can't decide for you what celebrating your culture looks like but if you tell me what you are looking for I can help execute it and if we're just specifically looking through the lens of art we're absolutely missing out on art as well, you know, if we're the only people represented. I think this is all wonderful. I do agree with Tom too. I think this is gonna be, I think we need to take the next month individually and kind of work out what this means to each of us. Cause there's- and Discuss it at the next meeting. We need our council. Yes. We need our council liaison. Yeah. We do. Um, yeah, she'll be important to this. As far as budget goes, I finding as we're talking, it's hard to kind of quantify this yeah. in into a number. So I'm kind of curious so what your yeah. It's really hard until we know what it looks like. And and from what I'm hearing in the discussion right now, it sounds like it could be something that's much broader than the Arts and Culture Commission. It could be a citywide thing. Yeah, and then it be. be a be a then it's a whole different thing. But even if it's something where it's community engagement, we have listening sessions. We did this when we did the um, <clears throat> the comprehensive plan. We had like six forums, you know, that were at park buildings. They were here. They were all over the place. They were they were at private businesses or whatever. And we sent out lots of mailers and things like this for people in the community to come and say what they wanted to say about this stuff. And so I think I think that's that's a good way to start and i think that costs almost nothing i mean because if you want to have cookie and co cookies and coffee or something like that there's not a lot of money there but there's a great chance to learn a lot you know and if you if we can even host them like as a council member i went to an event it was the Hmong business association at the Hmong house in north st paul and i was overwhelmed with what I saw there. I was, it, it was amazing. We had like the, they, they had the, um, all the gubernatorial candidates, cause it was whatever year it was, 2020 or 2019 or something, but the, all the gubernatorial candidates were there. We had the uh, 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 ambassador from Laos was there. Um, there I, I couldn't believe the people and it was this, this was a, it was a big event, and I th I don't know if that's an annual thing that they do or not, but but connecting with those people at the Hmong House and into that Hmong Business Association could be a good um, route to maybe try and, you know, f f it, it might be a good place to host something, you know. The other thing that makes it tricky, too, to plan from a budgeting perspective is not all cultures are accepting of cookies and coffee when you go, if you were going to their places, that might not be what they want or what they need. So but, yeah, and it's also not about the cookies and the coffee or whatever. It's, you know, just having the a venue, a forum. I think also, you know, like outreach wise, you, you know, like you, you gotta think that, you know, the usual methods of communicating with, you know, like white people 
is not necessarily the same as the same way like other cultures might get information, right? Like some people might be more like video based or like, you know, like specifically they're watching certain YouTube channels or whatever. And so like when you are posting it on, you know, like Facebook or on the website, like it's possible that you're missing out on the whole segment of people because you're not communicating in a way that the people that you want to reach are going to hear or, you know, get the information. So you just have to be also... Um, and the, yeah. Sorry, didn't mean to cut you off. That kind of dips into the um, branding and communication yeah. potential budget areas as well. Um, if we're thinking about unique ways to reach people, and some of those things do involve money, if we're, especially if we're looking about looking into things like translations or yeah. interpreters, um, and not just for people who don't speak English, but if we're thinking about accessibility. Yeah. Uh, ASL, yeah, uh, captioning, things like that. Do we have translators available at the city level? So, so funding requests. 2500 for community outreach and engagement um, for all of the things that you just said. Interpretation services. Interpretation. Translation services. YouTube, videos, preparing things in different ways. The other question is, can some of our budget be used for internal billing to support staff time for stuff, for some of these initiatives? Because we're doing, we're, we're all volunteers and we love, well, I love being here and being a part of all of this, but even with some of our other projects, we've ran into some internal struggles because it's not in the other city department's budgets to help support us. So for some of this outreach stuff, could we could we hi like internally hire city staff so if they allocate it to us and we hire them to execute our plan would there be less resistance because then it's not coming out of their pocket it's coming out of ours potentially i can certainly ask yeah i haven't come across that question yet so i can ask i wonder if our um sorry i might jump topics here not fully um, i wonder about if our culture piece would just be that the ACC is a safe place for people to come and discuss what they need in the city in general. Not that it has anything to do with arts or anything, but that we can then recommend changes to the city council directly. So not that we're putting on events, not that we're putting on art, but we are the place where they can come and voice what they need in our city. Although I love that idea, I feel like um, it's uh, it's, out of the scope of our um, committee, but I do wonder about like what the process might be for like if the city were to, you know, like to do a committee that would, you know, um, be geared towards DEIA, you know, um, so that we could ourselves, you know, like plug into it. Like they have the people, they have the representation or whatever, and like they also have the people who could reach out to those communities and then we could plug into their network or connections so that we could get our art stuff, get feedback on our arts stuff, you know? So, so that, that group is a broader and can be a resource to all commissions and the city council and yes. we're just, and just using them as and a like resource. Build it into the, yeah, policy, <laughs> into the policy work of North <clears throat> Yeah, absolutely, because, you know, I love the ideas of opening our doors, but the real, a lot of this stuff takes place on an individual level, relationship building, trust building, and, you know, there's only so much of that we can do sitting here, but if there are people specifically allocated to go into the community and build those relationships and also develop I, I think a way to apply the ideas and values that we're talking about in a really competent way and instruct others on how to do that, that would be more meaningful, I think, than maybe, I think there's a lot of mistakes can be made when there are good intentions, but people don't know what they're doing and how to talk to different people. So if there's some sort of like expert body of experts who could kind of inform everyone um, on how to do this competently, that would be really helpful. I love that idea, C. Other thoughts? Um, 
That would be a great presentation for the city council. <laughs> So as much as I, I actually really do love that idea, and I think it's very much needed here in North St. Paul, that is a presentation that somebody would have to go and present and talk about it and get that ball rolling that way. So, yeah. So, again, I think there's a ton we can talk about on this, but right now we just got to get some budget ideas out here. So... The community engagement thing. I do think like some of the things you're saying, Emily, those are, I think they're broader city things. And for us to try and fund a lot of that just in our own budget seems like a lot. Um, it's, it's things that maybe the city should do more generally. Um, and if that ends up bum bumping up our, you know, our ask for just that one line item to, you know, $5,000, I think it'll probably be met with some resistance, or I think we got to have, you know, clearer justification for that and why that would only be just in this commission's budget. Well, wouldn't it be amiss if we didn't add it and then, like, nothing gets done regarding DEI or community outreach? No, but I'm just saying $5,000, you know. So, would, you know, what can we do? Like, what's your number for oh. this community engagement? That's what I'm trying to get at here. Oh, okay. What is your number? When's, when's the next city council? Um, uh, two, two weeks, weeks from yesterday, so the 20th. Because we, we could also organize and show up at, as the public at the next city council <coughs> meeting and make this presentation as the public. Yes, but what, what is that budget that we want to give to Tom? 2000 2000 He said 5000 though. No, I, I said, said 2000 5, I too think 5000 would be a tough call. <laughs> so we're saying for interpretation, services, um, Accessibility pieces. Um, I don't know what this costs. I have no idea. Okay, so so what I've got here so far is so we got the utility box wraps five thousand, Project Snowy twenty five hundred, Art Cart supplies a thousand, Branding and Communications a thousand, Mural Project ten thousand, and Community Engagement two thousand. That gets us up to twenty one five. So that's twenty five hundred for the community engagement, and then okay. Um, and then we've got, um, so separately we have Autumn Arts Festival, 6,000, and Paint and Sip, we have nothing. Because it's built into the events. No, no well, we need to request some event. budget for that. So how much would we request for those events? Do we want to hire someone to? Yeah, I think we'll need to hire. Yeah. Yeah. So a thou one or 2,000, I think? I don't know. Uh, how much does it is it to the, hire a person? Those are a charge thing, so I'm, I don't know. Maybe if we, you know, I don't know what you'd pay a person. I have no idea. I don't know. It's it's about like what two hours of work, mm -hmm. and whatever prep they have to do. Two hundred. They're bringing bucks. materials or if we're providing. Yeah, them. we're providing them. We're providing all the materials. But I'm just thinking if we do different, other than just acrylic paint canvas night, what if we did no, we're different? Gonna do Okay. I think that'd be too hard. Okay. Especially if it's paint specific. Yeah. So a thousand dollars? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sure. So just to just to think about this too, and I can't remember the percentage exactly, but so we're looking at a funding request of twenty two thousand dollars for Arts and Culture Commission. So that's you know nearing tw double what we did for this year. And then seven thousand dollars for the events, which would, you know, more than double what the current events budget is. When you get into council budget meetings, they look at. I think there is something like for every twenty-five thousand dollars, it's an additional X percent of uh, tax increase. You know, for for property taxes. So it's just something to think about. So. You know, we can say, yeah, hey, now's the time, shoot for the moon, et cetera. But I think, you know, it also, it's like, it, then you also become a big target, you know, the bigger your number is. So we, we may want to think about that too. So I don't know when, you're, when your final time is when you want this done, Sarah. Uh, Brandy was looking to have it before the next council meeting. <laughs> so okay. pretty quick so, here. My question would be is, does the council look at that and say, no, you don't get this line item at all? Or will they say, we'll give you half of this line item? They, 
I don't know if they will look at line item at all. They will look at the overall commission budget okay. and say, well, we're, we can't do $22,000, we can do fifteen. And then we just split and that up however we... would have to make those decisions, okay. yeah. So just something to think about because it is, it, every time, every year when it comes to budgeting time, there are always increases to take into account and so even trying to keep a flat budget can be very difficult. Um, so when we're when we're looking at adding significantly, and I mean this isn't huge, but you know anything where you're seeing increases is going to be something where the council is going to go. Well, hang on a second, you know. So, so but if if we have good rationale for everything, it's great. But what I would suggest is so Sarah, I'll send this to you. You can send it out to everybody, and then if anyone has any ideas, just send them back to Sarah. Um, you know, the only, you know, one saving grace that I see is a potential in here is we got $10,000 in here for a mural. So that's almost half the budget right there. If if we were able to get some funding for a mural, then that would be $10,000 that wouldn't need to be spent. But at the end of the day, it would still need to be budgeted for. So that's the hard thing that happens there, so. Sorry, Sarah, do you know how much of our budget we spent so far this year? I don't off the top of our head, but I want to say we're probably at 35 or 40 percent. We haven't spent a lot yet, but I know with the murals coming up, um, and then when we finally get the utility box invoice, it'll be a little bit higher. But I can get those numbers pulled together and send them out as well. That'd be great. Yeah. And I do, Tom, like the idea of us submitting our budget request with the slide that you have that yeah. does, because it will be shocking to our council to see the number, the total number, and that slide would help remind yeah. the council why we exist and the importance of what that number is going to serve. Yeah. Um, okay, so this was really good discussion. I think, Sarah, note for next meeting is that we have uh, in our business action items and recommendations, we reserve some time there for this culture discussion um, and pick that up. And so I think it'd be nice for everybody in the interim is to think about what is the shape of that? You know, what do we, what should, what would we do? Um, and what might that look like? What might it cost? All of those things so that we can um, st start to get a framework around it. Um, anything else then on that for budget discussion? Okay, um, old business. I don't think we have any old business. Sarah, do we have anything? Nope. Okay, reports from staff, Sarah? Nothing new. Reports from commissioners. I'll start down with you, Amanda. You got anything? Um, not necessarily reports, just a open request that I'd like to have a conversation with you and or Carrie about the website and beefing up the arts and culture pages that we have and don't have. Carrie? Nothing. Stacy? I have nothing, no. Yeah, I don't think I have anything else. We don't, uh, I'm sorry, see? I do not have anything. Anyone? Um, I just wanted to mention that, as you know, as you all know, I've been absent for a little bit, um, but I am back, and you can include me on things again. I would love to be included, thank you. And yeah, if you guys wanna loop me back into the utility box, Project. Okay. Let's get you Chatter. on some projects. Yeah. You just you need some subcommittees, Emily. I I have one. I just had to pause with them. <laughs> that was that's the utility boxes, right? Yep. Yeah. But I'm well, I'm also fun. interested in helping with the arts festivals, the autumn arts festival too. So great, great. Okay. Hey, are we gonna march in the parade again? Is the parade? I don't know. The parade is on is on. And that's right before the the thing. So maybe we shouldn't this year, but. I didn't want to. What? What? When the is fall it? roundup parade is happening this year? It's September fourteenth, and then the arts festival is the what fifteenth? Mm -hmm. I I think we should do something. Oh. Just try and drum up interest. <laughs> what? The you only I no, mean, no. like some ideas. We had the the snowy that we could parade through town last year, which was a lot of fun. But like, maybe we could have a cultural listening session day scheduled and hand out have a QR code on the snowy or something that directs people to mm -hmm. come to it. 
We should do something fun in the parade, though, too. Like, I don't know, like some sort of performative item, like <laughs> handing out chalk or something, I don't know, to add like art. Stickers. Or just have bubble gun. <laughs> Back to the stickers. Yeah. Stickers. yeah. yeah. Uh, Carrie, you costume. want a t-shirt gun to get yeah. those t-shirts out there? there? There is a one in, North St. Paul has one. I know Terry is always the one wearing that thing. Um, okay, anything else on that? Okay, I, we don't. I have a question about our next meeting. Mm -hmm. Can we like July change 3rd, it? Because yeah. well, that's hard. I know. I see that being a potential issue. It's a huge conflict. Yeah. I don't like it. Do we know, have people we, who know will be out on the fifth? I will be out. Okay, that's a what is it? A Wednesday? Yes. yes. <laughs> They're off <on> Wednesdays. <laughs> oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> it's I the fifth. <laughs> Um, Even delaying it like so, what is it? A the day after the Fourth of July, then? Yes. The fifth. Yeah. Just trying it's to like, throw. Like, could we de like delay question. it a week? <laughs> would th Would there be any with the the twelfth instead? I'm fine with that. Yeah. July I don't see any issues with that. I'll have to check availability and all that, but yeah. I can send that out. And if you had to take vacation, you need to take vacation too. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> I fly back in. And I get in at midnight the night before, so I was hoping we wouldn't have a meeting on the 5th, but I was oh, going to make okay. it work if we... So do, you, do you want to look into that, Sarah, yeah. and we can just make a... So you would all be okay if we switched it to the 12th, I if think I can so. get that coordinated? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. I'll work on that. Okay. So if nothing else, we'll entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. So moved. Stacey. Second. Second by Emily. Okay, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Meeting is adjourned at 8.16 p.m. All right.